Oh, I know it's summertime because my favorite dance show started back up this week. You know the one. So you think you can... Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. This week's episode is also sponsored by Audible.com. And I've got a great book recommendation this week, read by Will Wheaton. I'm finishing up our craft room makeover this week with this drop-down work table. I'm going to start by building the table itself first and then build the cabinet around it to fit. This frame is important. It's going to give strength to the thin plywood top. I'm using quarter inch or 12 millimeter plywood for the table top. I'll skin this plywood onto the frame with glue and brad. For the edge banding around the tabletop, I'm using these furring strips I picked up at the home center. These are only 99 cents and you can find some good ones if you're persistent and spend the time to really look through the pile. These strips will help stiffen the top once they're attached. Right now there's a little bit of a bow to the top, so I'm going to use a level as a straight edge to make sure that it's perfectly straight. That's about as lightweight as I think I can make it, and yet it's still pretty sturdy. I'm attaching this continuous hinge to this inside brake. I'm making the legs out of 2x4s. Here I'm squaring them up using my edge jointing jig. I'm going to assemble this with glue and screws. I want to line up this leg and get it installed now. I'll remove it later so I can paint it. I want this table leg to lock into position. So I picked up a couple of these table leg braces. And I got to tell you, these things are almost impossible to install. I've spent about two hours trying to get them positioned just perfectly so that they'll fold up right. The instructions on the back of the package are completely inadequate. So if any of you have used these before and have some sort of a trick, please leave a comment down below. Or also, if any of you have a better solution for locking these into place, I'd love to hear it. I managed to get this side working reasonably well and I covered up all the mistake holes with some spackling so I wouldn't forget which hole is the correct one. And now I'm marking exactly where it is on this side so I can transfer it to the other side. That was not fun. For the cabinet, I'm just making a simple frame. I cut one edge of this top board with a 45 degree bevel. That's gonna help me hang the cabinet on the wall. Now I can start to assemble the doors. I'll attach the plywood panels directly to the frames. I'll attach the hinges for the doors now. I'm gluing these magnets in to act as a latch. I'm painting this with chalk paint. Is it just me or does this look real similar to TARDIS blue? Here in the craft room, I'm gonna mount the cabinet to the wall first and then put in the table. And I've cut this board that has the opposite angle as this one. So I can just mount this directly to the wall and drop it in. Now I'll put screws in the rest of the frame pieces.
everybody, let me take just a moment to talk to you about audible.com. First of all, I want to thank all of you who left comments about my spot last time where I recommended The Martian. It was really fun to read all of your comments. The book I'd like to recommend for you this month is perfect for all of us who are geeks, and especially those of us who were geeks back in the 1980s. It's called Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. The book takes place in kind of a dystopian future where most of the people live in the Oasis, which is this online environment, which is really indistinguishable from the internet. The thing I like most about Ready Player One are all of the pop culture references, especially from the 1980s. Video games, movies, music. Show of hands if you remember Max Headroom. Did you play Tempest at the arcade? Do you remember a game called Joust? What's your favorite classic video game? Maybe one that you spent hours on in the arcade. Leave a comment down below. And also let me know if you've already read Ready Player One and what you thought of it. Don't forget, you can download this book or any of over 150,000 other audiobooks free by going to audible.com slash woodworking. I want to thank all of you who have been enjoying my book recommendations. And as always, I really want to thank audible.com for supporting Woodworking for Mere Mortals. And that completes the craft room makeover. I think I started this about a year ago, but now it's a complete convertible room. It's either a craft room or it also doubles as a guest bedroom. If you'd like to make your own drop down table, I've got a free set of plans down below. I hope you've enjoyed this craft room makeover and picked up some ideas for your own space. If you haven't seen all that we've done to this room, check out the playlist of all of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you next week.